Good morning, church. Before we have our time of prayer, I just want to mention how blessed we are. This morning we came in, we didn't have internet, I couldn't print my sermon, the fire alarm was beeping, and everybody was turning to Eve. So God bless Eve for all that she does, and for Jerry, who uh, had a soloist, and then received word that the soloist was sick, and so she rushed in to make sure we have some kind of music, and so we are blessed. So let us give God the glory. Let us go to the Lord in prayer together. Almighty God, we give thanks for the calm after the storm. We are thankful for your blessings, we are thankful for your forgiveness, and we are thankful for your guidance. Help us, Lord, to see your way, your will, that we may faithfully follow, and that we would faithfully share the good news of your goodness, your glory, that's for each and every person. Lord, we are thankful for your presence here this day. Lord, we have lifted up many that are sick and suffering. We pray that your spirit be with them, comfort them. And Lord, we seek healing for them, but we also seek your will. We ask that you would be with those who are waiting for surgery or recovering from it. Those who have or waiting for test results. Life can be difficult. And illness makes it so much more so. Lord, bless them. Comfort them in their time of need. Be with those who have lost loved ones, that they may know your presence and the peace that only you can bring. Lord, we lift up your church. For all who gather in your name, Lord, may they be blessed. May we be a light shining in a world filled with darkness. May your love come through us and go into this world that others may come to know you. We lift up the men and women who serve in our communities. We pray that you would watch over them and keep them safe. We pray for the men and women who serve on behalf of our nation around the world. We lift up the people of Ukraine who are going through this difficult time of war. May they not lose hope. and May they find strength in you. And Lord, we pray that there may be peace. Grant us peace and understanding this day as we lift our hearts before you in prayer. For we pray this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, the scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John. Again, it is a very long reading. It's chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Let us turn now to the Word of God together. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This is illness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of Man, or the Son of God, may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you want to go there again? Jesus answered, 
Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. So Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God, who was coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out. They followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? Some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone laid against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone." Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out. His hands and feet were bound with linen strips and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what, di what he did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord for our understanding and our blessing. Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus, saying that Lazarus was ill. 
Now, we believe that Jesus was about a day's journey away. But evidently, Lazarus died not long after the messenger was sent. Jesus receives word that Lazarus was ill. The one whom you love is ill. Coming from Mary and Martha, Jesus knew that would be Lazarus. He was very close with this family. He told his disciples, this illness does not lead to death, for it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. It doesn't lead to eternal death. But we do know that Lazarus died. We are told that Jesus stayed two more days. Now, how many of you have ever been with a loved one in the hospital and get frustrated because the doctor hasn't come yet? How often are we so impatient? And yet, Jesus, we, it tells us that Jesus loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and yet when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he waited two days. Jesus knew what he was doing. He knew that Lazarus had died. But it was part of God's plan. My dad suffered a heart attack when I was in high school. And it was after high school I was at work. I worked at Hofheimer Shoes. And that day I'd come in just to stock shoes. And I was taking boxes that had come in and putting them on the shelves in the back room. When the, my brother called the store, and I went to the phone, and they said that my dad had had a heart attack. He was in the hospital, and it was serious. And I went to my boss, and I said, Frank, I've got to leave. My dad's had a heart attack. He's in the hospital. He looked at me. He said, are you a doctor? I said, no. He said, well, you can't do anything. You can't help him. And I looked at him. I really wanted to say something ugly, but I didn't. But I did tell him he could take his job uh, and keep it. I was going to the hospital. So I did because I wanted to be close. I wanted to be with my family. My dad recovered and, and was fine, but we didn't know at the time. But Jesus waited two days. And then when he says, let us go to Judea again, his disciples say, whoa, 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 wait a second, Jesus. Come on. They wanted to stone you last time you were there. Why would you go back? Because it was part of God's plan. The disciples did not understand. Jesus told them that if you walk in the day, you won't stumble, but if you walk at night, you will stumble. That talks about our faith. If you have faith and trust in God, you can do all things. Fear will not stop you. Jesus wanted his disciples to have this kind of faith where they would make the journey. He told them that Lazarus has fallen asleep. And they said, well, if he's asleep, he will recover. Sleep brings healing. They didn't understand he meant that Lazarus had died. And when he tells them, no, he's dead. I imagine the disciples were thinking, well, if he's dead, there's no need for us to go up there and put yourself in danger. They didn't understand God's plan. How often do we not understand God's plan when something happens? How often do we get frustrated when things happen a certain way, not trusting in God. I read an article this week entitled, Prayer, the Last Resort. How often do we turn to God when we've tried everything else? How often do we not turn to God when God is the answer? But we rely on ourselves and worldly things and don't trust in God. Jesus is trying to teach his disciples, trust, have faith, believe. 
So they made the journey back to Bethany. <coughs> and Moan coming toward the village. He hadn't entered the village yet, but Martha had heard he's coming. And so she rushes out to meet him. And what does she say? What does Martha say? Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Knowing that Jesus could have healed him of his illness, but not understanding that Jesus could raise him from the dead. So we have Martha knowing that Jesus could have healed him while he was sick. But it's interesting, when Jesus, well, let me just read it. Verse 21, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask for, God will give it to you. And Jesus said, now that statement alone, whatever you ask, God will give it to you. You would think that she means if you ask God to raise him from the dead, it will happen. But she doesn't mean that. She doesn't have that deep of faith. She doesn't have that understanding of who is before her. Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. And Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the the life. This is key for us to understand and to have faith in our Lord and Savior today. To understand that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He goes on and says, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Now, wait a second. If he said, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who believes and lives and believes in me shall never die. Well, Lazarus had died. What's going on here? But Martha answered, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ the Son of God who is coming into the world. The great confession. The great confession of faith in Christ Jesus. When you join the church, you're asked two questions. Do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? And do you accept him into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior? Martha here is saying, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God. That is the great confession. But Martha still did not understand that her brother was about to be raised from the dead right then. Now Martha went and told Mary that the teacher is here and wants to see you. He's calling for you. And she got up quickly and she headed to where Jesus was the same place where Martha had left him, not quite into the village yet. And the crowd of mourners, see, because Bethany was only two miles away, there were a lot of people from Jerusalem who had come. It was, it was the proper thing to do, to mourn, and they mourned for days on end. Once Mary reached Jesus, she fell at his feet, Saying basically the same thing her sister said. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. They had faith that he could heal while he was ill. But they don't understand the true power of God through Jesus. That he will be raised from the dead. Now, we read that Jesus was deeply moved and greatly troubled. Actually, where it says deeply moved may be translated as groaned or angered. Now, why would Jesus be angry about this situation? 
Some have argued that he was angry because people's unbelief and hypocritical wailing. These mourners from Jerusalem crying and shouting out, putting on a show. Not coming from the heart, but that's what it was expected. But that probably isn't the best explanation. A better explanation is that Jesus was angry at the tyranny of Satan who had brought sorrow and death to the people through sin. He was angry about the circumstances. Where it says Jesus wept. This is different from the weeping of the people. The mourners. His quiet shedding of tears. Differed from their loud wailing. It wasn't for show. He was weeping over the tragic consequences of sin. He was weeping over those who did not understand his power, the power of God. The crowd interpreted his weeping as an expression of love or frustration at not being there to heal Lazarus. Jesus knew what was taking place. Jesus didn't rush to Lazarus' side because he knew God's plan. He knew that if Lazarus died and he called him from the grave, that people would believe in him and the power of God. Jesus commanded, remove the stone. Take away the stone. What does Martha say? Oh, Lord, no. That's not a good idea. He's been in the grave for four days and the body's going to smell. Decomposition happens quickly in that climate. It was very common for when the person died, they were buried that same day. They didn't have viewings. They didn't embalm them. They simply anointed the body with different herbs and oils, ointments. And placed them in the tomb. And perhaps that's why they had this mourning period for such a long time. Because they didn't have the things we have today. Where you go and have a visitation and a funeral and then a burial. Jesus says, take away the stone. Jesus reminded Martha of his earlier promise in verses 25 and 26, that she would see the glory of God if she believed his word, that he is the resurrection and the life and trusted him, God would be glorified. But unless the sisters had trusted Jesus, permission would not have been given to open the tomb. With the stone taken away, the tension mounts. Everybody's wondering, what what is he doing? Why would you remove the stone of a man who's been in the grave for four days? The stench will be horrible. Why do this to the sisters? Think of everything they're thinking going through their head. They weren't prepared for Jesus to call out for Lazarus. He knew he was doing the Father's will and manifesting his power and his love. His prayer of thanksgiving was public, not so that he would be honored as the wonder worker, but so he would be seen as the Father's obedient son. Remember, he prays out loud to God for God granting this authority, for God allowing this to take place. It wasn't for him. It was so that the power would be pointed to God. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And there he came, still wrapped in the burial cloth and strips of linen. And he walked out out of the grave. Now, what do you think people were doing? I bet you could hear a pin drop. Everybody went, oh. And 
stood there. Jesus directed the people to take off the grave clothes. Let him, set him free. He did that so that people wouldn't think Lazarus was a ghost. They wanted to see the man, or he wanted them to see the man. See, this event is a marvelous picture of God's Son bringing life to people. Jesus brings life to us. Those who believe shall never die. I truly believe this. Not many years later, after my dad's heart attack, he had a stroke. And after that, he, he lost some mobility, but he was still pretty good. And about a year later, he had another stroke. And this one was a massive stroke where he lost the ability to communicate or to walk. And my dad had always been a faithful man. My dad was in church more than the preacher. He was just there. He, he served in every position the church had, just about. And I could not understand why God wouldn't take him. Because my understanding of death is that death is not the end, but it's the transformation. It's the doorway to life eternal. And I wanted my dad to receive his reward. I didn't want him to suffer there. Have no quality of life. But it was God's plan. I think it allowed my sister and my mother to prepare themselves for my dad's death and for the brothers as well. So when my dad did die, I gave thanks to God because my faith tells me that he was not going to the grave, but he was going to the kingdom of heaven. He was going to be in the presence of God and there is no greater place to be. See, when Jesus called out, take away the stone, he was taking away the stone for all of us. When Jesus came out of his tomb on that Easter morning, he set us all free from the grave. We don't have to lay in a grave at all. We go from life to life eternal. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. You'll hear me say that over and over again because I believe that there is just a, a moment of transition before we enter into the kingdom of God for those who believe and are faithful. So Jesus takes away our stone. We're not kept in the grave. Our grave clothes are removed because we live eternally in the kingdom of God. The good news is, is that Jesus Christ has provided for us an escape from the tomb, an escape from sin, an escape from life eternal in darkness, in Hades, in hell. And so we give thanks to God for a love so great that he took our sins, that our stone may be removed and we are set free from the grave. Amen.